there must be deep confession and repentance on the part of you and I, the elect of God. The river of the Holy Ghost must be able to flow through us. Therefore, there must be nothing in us that would prevent the flow of this river of life. We must humbly come before our Heavenly Father and ask His forgiveness. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen, and earnestly seek His direction and guidance. We know His Word said, Woe unto them that call evil good. But that's exactly what we have done by allowing the flesh a place in our worship. We confess before God that we have lost our spiritual. We must confess before God that we've lost our spiritual equilibrium and inverted our values. We confess that we've question the absolute truth of the Word of God by preaching so many other things. We profess to love for the Word, but have ignored it. We arrogantly have given ourselves the title of Pentecostal, professing more power than all others, yet lack the power to witness to the lost, let alone live holy lives. We've worshipped other gods and called it prosperity. We've learned more from religious TV stars than the bright and morning star. We've ranted against perversion in our street, but refused to confess that it was the compromise in the Word of God in the church which produced such perversion in the first place. Romans chapter 1, 25 and 26. By remaining silent, We've empowered the purveyors of perversion in the pulpit, in the voting book, yet dare call ourselves holiness. We've murdered the unborn with our silence in the pulpit. We've prostituted our values because of our loyalty to our party, our union, our ancestry, our prejudices. We've committed the sin of racism by condoning the wrongs of the past and the present. Others have committed the sin of racism by their unforgiveness and search of revenge. We've lazily prepared to preach, satisfied with replacing anointing with noise. We've rejected to train up our children in the way that's right, then blame the devil. We complain because prayer is not allowed in the school. Yet a vast majority of the church members have no altar in their home. We, we've abused power and called it apostleship. We, we revere the high and mighty among men and disdain little men who are much more holy. We've closed our lips to the concept of holiness to be more sensitive to the appeal of the lost. Not since the Pharisees accused Jesus of being Beelzebub have you, has Christ been more dishonored than with this user-friendly gospel. We become user-friendly without confessing it. We've shunned the past as archaic, have accepted the trends of the modern church. Our worship is guided by the top 40 gospels instead of truths embedded with the gospel. Our arrogance drives us through the night, oblivious to our ineffectiveness and our distaste for learning. Others trust in their learning and forget their living. We hastily judge other groups, presuming our perfection, preferring our unique tradition over unique relationship. We've lost the vision of God as results for the most part. We're unconscious of the destructive process going on. We don't know the way back to reality because we've lost the vision, my God, of where we've fallen from. We've confused noise with power, charisma with calling. We've replaced conviction with counseling, sin with tolerance. We've erased the reality of hell from the Bible to be loved by those who hate our God. We ascribe on paper to the second coming, but it's rarely preached, taught, or expected. We go on our merry way, driving past the lost, 
preaching weekly to those who have already heard. We've created a climate where we are more interested about our own needs being met than the needs of the community. We have pastors with a maintenance mind desiring to make everybody happy. Their commitment is not to the Great Commission. It's to clean restrooms, neat bulletins, deluxe potluck suppers. We have young pastors more dis- uh, who uh, pastors more discontented what others have done but have no problem with what they have not done. We have pastors content with no progress, using the excuse of doing everything they know but unwilling to learn. We have too many people who grovel over TV religious stars who squander your money on limony, limousines, mansions, airplanes, and evangelism goes undone. We drip toward compromise, call it tolerance. We drip toward disobedience, call it freedom. We drip toward superstition, call it faith. We cherish the indiscipline of the lost, self-control, and call it relaxation. Due to discontent, we replace the presence of wisdom with carelessness, thinking all is real, all Risk is better than none. God help us to turn to God. Listen, if we're going to see revival, then this is there's going to have to come repentance and confession on the part of the church of God. If we'll separate the vile, that is the flesh, from the spirit, God said we can be his mouth. And that's all that's necessary. I beg you today, church, hear me. I'm talking to a people, maybe my last message to you, but there must be individually and collectively a repentance on the part of the elect of God. Hear me today. God, purify our hearts. Turn us back to the truth and reality of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, let it be so today. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.